In this video, I'm gonna tackle the number one question that I get from new users to Substance Stager, and that is, am I limited to the 3D models that exist already inside of Stager? And the easy answer is no. So we can go here to the Substance documentation that's gonna show us all the different model import types that we can have. Things like uh, FBX, OBJ, GLB, STL, all these different USD formats. If you have a business enterprise license, you could also import CAD models. This is a lot of the alphabet soup. This is a lot of uh, jargon and just acronyms that drive me crazy. And But basically what this means is that you can import almost any model from any application, download it from any website, or sent to you by somebody else. Um, Let's take a look at what that actually looks like inside of Stager. Because again, if you're new to 3D, none of these letters mean anything to you and that's totally legit. So again, by default, you can, you know, obviously work with some of the models that exist in, inside of Substance Stager here. Additionally, with your Substance subscription inside of Adobe, you also get access to the 3D asset library. So inside the 3D asset library, you can have access to 3D models. These models come in a couple different file formats. So let's just grab this Blazor. You can see that you can either download it as an FBX or GLB file. Doesn't really matter. I always download FBX just because that's the first button that's there. Same model, same format. Once it's imported into Stager, all looks the same. How do you get these models in, into Stager? Well, easily you can download them. And then there's three, actually three different ways that you can get models into Stager from here. You can go to File, Import, 3D model, and that'll allow you to open them. You can go to this plus symbol, say import to scene, 3D model this way. And this will, either one of those will open the web browser dialog box. And then you can just select what you wanna bring in and it'll plop it right down here at the origin. Again, these models are broken up into components. I talked about the scene graph up here. So what you can see is this uh, bike helmet, this vintage helmet actually comes in with different components. So there's, um, the helmet and the goggles. Inside the goggles, you can grab the bolts, the like individual components from here. So I can just select each one or you can select what's called the parent. This relationship is called parent-child relationship. So anything, uh, any smaller objects that are inside the group are called the child and the group itself is called the parent. So you can either grab all of them or individual ones um, just inside of this dialog box there. Additionally, as I mentioned, if you are working for a company that has an enterprise account, you can import CAD models. Now, if you are an individual and you yourself are doing CAD data, most CAD software allows you the ability to export as like an OBJ or an FBX or one of the other import types that you can bring in. So don't worry about that. This is really just for businesses that are a little bit handcuffed when a client sends them a CAD model and that's really all they have to work with. So let's go ahead and just drag and drop that into the scene. If you were bringing in a CAD model, um, you have the option of uh, giving it, it's called tessellation. It's basically like the quality of it. Uh, by default, it's high. This is just the number of polygons that it gets uh, uh, translated into, or like the, again, just like the resolution of it. Um, there's also the slider box for generating UVs. We will go in more detail on UVs in the painter course, but just know that UVs are a bit of a wrapping paper that exists on the model. So you can think of them as if you have a, uh, a holiday gift and you're wrapping it, um, it's the wrapping paper around the outside. The reason why that's important is it allows you to specifically place objects uh, or materials on the object in certain spots. So if you want a logo or a decal in a certain position, that's important. That's all we're gonna say about it now. You don't have to worry about it too much, but just know that having UVs on your 3D model is quite helpful. Uh, so this was something I downloaded from Steam. Uh, they, I think it's their Steam Valve. I think that's the name of their little handheld gaming thing. I am too old to know for sure, but we will go with that. So yeah, you can see that this converted the data quickly into um, uh, into a, uh, a model that can be read into Stager here. So super, super simple. The last thing that I wanna draw your attention to is a unique modeling type that exists inside of Stager, and that is our parametric models. So, you know, as you can see, if I drag and drop Matt into the scene, uh, if I can look over here at the object tab, there's not really much else I can do. You know, obviously I can use these handles to scale him up. I can go to the transform and adjust all that. But there isn't much about the character or the model itself that I can adjust. Now, any one of these models, the little lines next to them, those are parametric models. 
So the second I click those, you can see immediately that I have all these different um, the slider controls that allow me to modify the actual model itself. Now, all of these are constructed inside of um, Substance Designer, and we'll talk a little bit more about how they were created there. But just know that these lines are parametric models, and you can kind of do an infinite number of things with them. You've already seen me kind of uh, work through with the sofa a little bit. Same basic idea, and each one of these has unique sliders to what they are. So this shelving system will have a plank height, a uh, number of levels, and all that stuff. It's really powerful. Again, it just allows you to customize a scene uh, and customize um, these models for your specific purposes. And frankly, they are just a lot of fun to play with. So I would highly recommend um, each one of you kind of playing around with these a little bit and seeing what you can get. Um, but yeah, they're a lot of fun. A uh, unique feature with that inside of Substance Stager. Um, but again, these are just like a little bit of icing on the cake. The, the, the main substance of this is, is that you can import pretty much any 3D model into Substance Stager.